When scientists made a new discovery in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, the story left many experts scratching their heads, and it shocked the entire world. Dr. Elena Orlova sat huddled in the cramped research cabin, deep within the hauntingly quiet Chernobyl exclusion zone. She glanced at the monitor, her breath catching in her throat. The camera feed from one of their motion-activated cameras, installed miles away in the heart of the radioactive zone, flickered and then came into focus. What she saw on the screen made her blood run cold. The image showed a massive shape moving through the trees, a hulking, shadowy figure, unlike any animal they'd seen before. It seemed to glide through the forest, unnaturally graceful for something so big. Elena's heart raced as she leaned closer, her eyes wide with disbelief. But that wasn't what shook her to her core. The creature appeared to be glowing faintly in the darkness, emitting a soft, eerie light from its body. It was heading straight toward one of the remote research stations. Elena grabbed the radio, her voice trembling as she called for her colleague, Doctor. Sergei Petrov, who was stationed at the nearest outpost. Sergei, you need to get out of there. Now! There's something... Something coming your way! There was a crackle of static. Then Sergei's calm voice came through, tinged with confusion. Elena, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Something is coming. Just trust me, Elena urged. Get out of the station and head back to the main camp. I'm sending the coordinates now. Don't wait. Just go. A long pause followed. Then Sergei responded, his voice now laced with unease. All right, I'm packing up. Be there soon. Elena's hands trembled as she switched off the radio, her mind racing. What had they uncovered in this forsaken place? What was lurking in the Chernobyl forest's shadows? And how had the Chernobyl forest earned its name? On April 26, 1986, at exactly 1.23 a.m., reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, spewing lethal radioactive particles into the atmosphere. The disaster sent shockwaves across the world as the Soviet government scrambled to contain the fallout and evacuate the surrounding areas. The entire region, once home to thriving communities, was rendered uninhabitable almost overnight. The exclusion zone, a 30-kilometer radius around the plant, became a ghostly wasteland, a land poisoned by radiation, where life, it was assumed, could no longer thrive. But nature is nothing if not resilient. In the decades following the disaster, as the world moved on and the abandoned towns of Pripyat and Chernobyl became haunting relics of the past, something extraordinary began to happen. With humans gone, the animals returned. The forests and fields that had been left to decay began to flourish once more. Wolves, deer, wild boar, and other wildlife, once thought to be driven away by the catastrophe, began to reappear in startling numbers. Over the next 30 years, the number of animals in the exclusion zone increased significantly. Species that hadn't been seen in the area for over a century began to reappear. The European lynx, the brown bear, and even the rare Pshawalski's horse were spotted in the forests surrounding Chernobyl. What had once been a place of death has now become a sanctuary for wildlife. Scientists, intrigued by this unexpected resurgence of life, began to study the area more closely. They set up cameras, tracked footprints in the snow, and monitored radiation levels. What they discovered challenged everything they thought they knew about the effects of radiation on the environment. It was this remarkable transformation that had drawn Elena and Sergei to the zone. Their research team, funded by an international coalition of universities, had set out to study the impact of radiation on the local fauna. But what they discovered was far beyond anything they had anticipated. Elena had always been drawn to the mysteries of nature. As a child, she spent her days exploring the forests of Siberia, fascinated by the wildlife that inhabited the remote wilderness. This passion led her to pursue a career in biology, and when the opportunity arose to join the Chernobyl Research Project, she jumped at the chance. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study one of the most unique ecosystems on the planet. Together with Sergei, a seasoned ecologist with a deep knowledge of Eastern European wildlife, Elena set out to document the animal populations in the zone. They used everything from motion-activated cameras to drones to track the movements of various species, and over the course of several months, 
they had compiled a treasure trove of data that challenged conventional wisdom about radiation and its effects on living organisms. For Elena and Sergei, these findings were nothing short of miraculous. The absence of human interference had allowed nature to reclaim the land, creating a kind of sanctuary where animals could live and reproduce without the pressures of modern civilization. It appeared that radiation was less harmful to wildlife than humans. Professor Jim Smith of Portsmouth University, one of the leading experts on the Chernobyl exclusion zone, summed it up perfectly. We're not saying radiation is good, but the lack of human influence has allowed the animal population to increase. In a strange way, the disaster has created a refuge for wildlife. But there were also anomalies, strange occurrences that defied explanation. Some of the animals they tracked exhibited unusual behaviors, such as traveling in unnatural patterns or avoiding certain areas of the zone altogether. And then there were the sightings, fleeting glimpses of creatures that didn't match any known species in the region. It was these anomalies that led Elena and Sergei to launch their most ambitious project yet, a network of 42 high-definition cameras strategically placed throughout the Ukrainian part of the exclusion zone. The goal was simple, capture as much footage as possible of the wildlife in the area and analyze it for any signs of unusual behavior or new species. For months, the cameras recorded hours upon hours of footage. Most of it was mundane, wolves hunting in packs, deer grazing in the meadows, foxes darting through the underbrush. But every now and then, something strange would appear. A shadowy figure moving through the trees, or an eerie glow in the distance. Elena had initially dismissed these oddities, chalking them up to camera glitches or light tricks. But now, staring at the latest footage, she couldn't ignore the truth any longer. The next morning, Elena and Sergei gathered in the main research cabin to review the footage from the previous night. Sergei, who had arrived safely back at camp just before dawn, was skeptical of Elena's claims. I've been studying wildlife for over 20 years, Elena. Sergei said as he poured himself a cup of coffee. And I've never seen anything like what you're describing. Are you sure it wasn't just a bear? Or maybe a moose? They can look pretty strange in the dark. Especially with all this snow. Elena shook her head and fixed her eyes on the screen. I know what I saw, Sergei. This wasn't a bear or a moose. It was different. Larger. And it was glowing. Sergei raised an eyebrow. Glowing? That sounds a bit far-fetched, don't you think? Maybe the radiation is messing with the cameras. Elena bit her lip in uncertainty. It did sound unbelievable, even to her. But the footage didn't lie. She rewound the video to the moment where the creature appeared, then pressed play. Together, they watched as the massive shape moved through the trees, its outline barely visible against the dark forest. It was difficult to make out any details, but there was no denying its size. The glow, though faint, was unmistakable, a soft, pulsating light that seemed to come from within the creature itself. Determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, Elena and Sergei decided to focus their efforts on the area where the creature had been spotted. They moved several cameras closer to the location, hoping to capture more footage and set up additional sensors to monitor radiation levels and other environmental factors. Days passed, and the team waited anxiously for any sign of the mysterious creature. The cameras recorded hours of footage, but there were no further sightings. Elena began to doubt herself, wondering if she had imagined the whole thing. Then, one cold, moonless night, the creature reappeared. It was just after midnight when the alarm sounded. The motion sensors near the research station had detected movement, and the cameras had gone live streaming the footage directly to the main cabin. Without thinking, Elena grabbed her coat and flashlight, ready to go after it. Sergei tried to stop her, but she was already out the door, the cold air biting at her face as she plunged into the darkness. The snow crunched beneath her boots as she made her way through the forest, her breath coming in short, ragged gasps. The light from her flashlight cut through the darkness, but it did little to illuminate the path ahead. She could hear the creature moving somewhere in the distance, its footsteps heavy and deliberate. As she drew closer, the glowing light became visible once again, flickering through the trees like a beacon. Elena quickened her pace, desperate to catch up with it. Suddenly, the creature stopped. 
Elena froze, her flashlight trained on the spot where it had disappeared. For a moment, there was nothing but silence. Then, slowly, the creature emerged from the shadows, stepping into her light beam. Elena gasped, her eyes widening in shock. It was unlike anything she had ever seen. The creature was massive, standing at least ten feet tall, with a muscular body covered in thick, matted fur. Now that she could clearly see the creature, she found it easier to categorize it as a bear, albeit more massive than any other bear she had ever seen. Its eyes glowed with an eerie, unnatural light. For a long moment, Elena and the bear-like creature stared at each other, neither moving. Then slowly, it turned and disappeared back into the forest, its massive form melting into darkness. Elena stood frozen, her mind struggling to process what she had just seen. What was this animal? Where did it come from? And what did it mean for the future of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone? Back at the research cabin, Elena and Sergei pored over the footage from the night before. The creature had been captured on several cameras, and the data was clear. This was no ordinary animal. It was something new, something that had never been documented before. As they analyzed the footage, they began to piece together a theory. The animal's size, its strange behavior, all pointed to one conclusion. It had been mutated by the radiation in the zone. But unlike other animals, which had simply adapted to the environment, this animal had undergone a radical transformation. Elena and Sergei knew that their discovery would change everything. The world had always viewed the Chernobyl exclusion zone as a place of death and destruction, a symbol of humanity's hubris and the devastating consequences of nuclear power. But now, it had become something else entirely, a place of rebirth, where nature had evolved in ways that no one could have imagined. The news of their discovery spread quickly, and soon, scientists from around the world were flocking to the zone, eager to study the animal and learn more about its origins. But as the research continued, a disturbing pattern began to emerge. The creature was not an isolated incident. Other animals in the zone exhibited similar mutations, but on a smaller scale. It was as if the entire ecosystem was undergoing a rapid and unprecedented evolution, driven by the unique conditions of the exclusion zone. As they stood at the edge of the forest, watching the sun rise over the desolate landscape, Elena couldn't help but feel a sense of hope. The world had changed, but so had they. And that change promised something new. Something that could shock, amaze, inspire, and transform. Some scientists speculated that the radiation had triggered a kind of accelerated natural selection, allowing certain species to adapt and thrive in ways that would have been impossible under normal circumstances. Others suggested that the creature represented a new phase in evolution, one that was being driven by environmental pressures that humanity had never encountered before. But for Elena and Sergei, the creature was more than just a scientific curiosity. It was a reminder of the resilience of life, even in the face of unimaginable tragedy. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone had become a sanctuary for wildlife, a place where nature had been allowed to reclaim what had been lost. As the world grappled with the implications of the discovery, Elena and Sergei continued their work in the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. They understood that the creature was just the start of the zone's massive changes. For decades, Chernobyl had been a symbol of human failure, a reminder of the devastating consequences of nuclear power. But now, it has become something entirely different, a place where nature has reclaimed the land, where animals have adapted and thrived in ways that no one could have predicted. The exclusion zone had become a living laboratory, a place where scientists could study the long-term effects of radiation on ecosystems and learn valuable lessons about the resilience of life in the face of catastrophe. But perhaps the most important lesson of all was this. Sometimes the absence of human influence can be more beneficial than any environmental protection efforts. The animals of Chernobyl had shown that life could endure, even in the most hostile of environments, as long as it was left to its own devices. In the years that followed, the Chernobyl exclusion zone became a hub of scientific research, a place where biologists, ecologists, and geneticists could study the unique ecosystem that had emerged in the wake of the disaster. The discovery of the creature led to breakthroughs in genetics, evolutionary biology, 
and radiation science. But more than that, it changed the way humanity viewed its relationship with nature. The Chernobyl exclusion zone had become a living testament to the resilience of life, a reminder that even in the face of unimaginable tragedy, there was always hope for renewal and rebirth. In the heart of the Chernobyl forest, amidst the ruins of the past, life had found a way to survive. And in doing so, it had shocked the entire world. Have you ever encountered a scientific discovery that challenged your understanding of nature's resilience? How would you react if you were in Elena's position, face to face with an unprecedented creature in the Chernobyl exclusion zone? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And thank you for listening to this shocking tale of nature's unexpected evolution in one of the world's most notorious disaster zones. Join us for more exciting stories like this one.